Hey folks, today is Friday, April 5th, 2024. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week. Now you probably remember last week I did say I was going on vacation, and I am in a tropical setting, yes, but the news never stops. We always gotta have a Friday show. Thankfully, it was kind of a light week, I guess, because I wasn't around, but really because of uh, April Fool's Day. April 1st, of course, you get every corporation rolling out like a fake spoof or a joke or something. Uh, I got fooled by a Resident Evil 1 remake. Tweet, image, totally got me. I was like, what is this? And then I realized the date happens to all of us. But still with that in my quest to not go outside because the sun is bad for my gamer skin. <laughs> Let's talk about the news. Uh, the first bit of actual news this week is a little bit of a Witcher 4 update, so to speak. Uh, this was during a CD Projekt Red earnings call uh, where one of the heads of the company did go on record about the game a little bit more. Thanks for reporting from GameSpot. This is joint CEO Mikhail Nowakowski, who says a lot of corporate speak like with us expecting to make the game the best it can be and you know innovate and push boundaries and explore and stuff like that. But the biggest actual quote is, I guess what I'm saying is that you should not be expecting The Witcher 3 in new clothing of sorts, with new gameplay elements and new mechanics that you have not seen in our previous games. It's not just repeating what was done before. Along with that, uh, he did talk about how CD Projekt Red now has a bunch of projects in the works, but with all of them, this Witcher 4 or Project Polaris is actually the most developed game that they're working on. It's still in pre-production though, mind you, meaning they are still working on so many new things uh, with everything at a very base level. Pre-production is going to start apparently fairly soon, but that's about where The Witcher 4 is right now. It's definitely a long ways away. I still can't believe they even announced it this far away, but with them fixing and finishing Cyberpunk and then the DLC and stuff and that winding down, things are ramping up to The Witcher 4 and the Cyberpunk sequel. Uh, I did also do an interview with the CD Projekt Red guys on the Friends Per Second podcast. That should be up by this weekend if you wanna check that out. We talked a little bit more about, you know, some of the mistakes and lessons they learned with the Cyberpunk launch and stuff with Dogtown and the expansion and what's going on beyond. So if you wanna check that out, when that does go live, I'll link it in the description down below. Also, we got more Knights of the Old Republic updates. We did talk about this uh, last week or so where things are kind of murky, but things are still going because of Saber Interactive, who was working on the game, is now separated from Embracer Group, the massive holdings company that just took a bunch of development studios and publishers and intellectual properties and kind of tanked it all. Well, uh, thankfully, now we know from the head of Saber Interactive that Saber Interactive is still working on it and that the project is alive and well. This was kind of alluded to last week when we talked about it, but now uh, they went on the record to G IGN with a reporter and everything. And the quote is, it's clear, it's obvious that we're working on this. It's been in the press numerous times. What I will say is that the game is alive and well, and we're dedicating to making sure we exceed consumer expectations. That's a tall order, especially considering it seems like Sony doesn't want anything really to do with this project anymore. Uh, this also comes from some speculation with Jeff Grubb of Giant Bomb, who's gotten a lot of scoops before. He says, my understanding is that Sony wants nothing to do with the game anymore, which is why we thought it was dead. Obviously though, Saber still seems very determined and I have a lot of trust in Saber. As you probably remember, this comes with like Sony delisting their remake trailer and deleting it from social and everything like that. I don't know, Sony's gonna Sony. You never know what they're thinking. But at the very least, the project is still in the works with Saber, who is now independent. Me personally, I just hope it gets the budget it needs, the budget it deserves, because this could be the next big thing in Star Wars, like it really was for us older school fans back when it re originally released. So there's so much potential here, but it's like, does Sony have its back? Does Disney have its back? Or is it just Saber really on their own for the most part? We, we don't know for sure. Obviously there's always entanglements, but we know, don't know the extent and we're not gonna know until we actually see more of the game, which is still probably quite a ways away. But speaking of Jeff Grubb and Giant Bomb reporting and stuff, uh, according to him, and take it with a grain of salt, this is rumors, speculation, inside sources and stuff like that, but we may see some sort of PlayStation event in May, be it a showcase, a state of play, whatever you wanna call it. That's what the current industry speculation is. So we don't know if we're actually going to get something like that for sure, but it might be the case. And according to this, we might hear more about the Silent Hill 2 remake 
and maybe a release date. Again, this is something that could totally happen or not happen. It's a slow news week. What do you want from me, all right? Hey, next up, jumping over here real quick to talk about today's sponsor, Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep, and we've been eating well. It's super easy, particularly if you're a busy person and you don't have time to make lunch during the day. Uh, these things heat up in the microwave in two minutes, set it, forget it, and you're good. But they're actual real meals that are updated all the time with a bunch of add-ons you can get. And with Factor, you have choices like keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, vegan and veggie options, which include seafood, meat, and plant-based meals. Meals range from four to 18 delivered to you a week. You can change that, customize that. You can skip a week if you need. But for me personally, it's always just worked out because I'm very busy just grinding through games or editing videos. So it has really worked having these stocked, ready to go at our game ranks shooting space. Less time worrying about what you're putting in your body during the day to feed yourself to keep going and more about just living life. Or in my case, working, but hey. It's good stuff, there's a ton of variety and options, and thankfully it all tastes really good. So if you wanna check it out, head to factor75.com or click the link in the description down below. And when you're there, use code GAMERANKS50 for 50% 50 off your first Factor box. And then 20% off your next box. So again, head to the link in the description down below, factor75.com, use that code GAMERANKS50 to get 50% off your first box and then 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. And now that I ate, uh, big thanks to Factor for a sponsor in this video. Speaking of slow news week though, I do want to talk about Tekken 8. Harada has been doing a lot of interviews and press and tweeting uh, about Tekken 8, which has been going strong. We talked about Eddie Gordo being added last week on the show. Uh, Harada did do an interview as kind of, of course, like the head honcho of the Tekken franchise, uh, speaking with uh, the Game Makers Notebook podcast. And he went on record about a lot of stuff. It's a good podcast, but also uh, some quotes kind of made headlines and I want to cut through it a little bit. He got into a deep conversation about how player bases are changing and generations are changing and he kind of equated it to society in Japan with his generation being extremely competitive culturally professionally financial all that uh, and that is why there's so much success in fighting games the competition of one-on-one -on -one intensity but to a lot of people he just said that the younger generations the newer generations don't prefer one-on-one -on -one fighting games they like team-based fighting games because if you lose with the team it's not totally your fault you can pass the blame onto somebody else now that does sound like an old man saying, oh, kids these days, they can't, you know, they just, they can't take one-on-one -on -one competition and, you know, accepting loss, losing in a game, sure. The full quote is, most young people nowadays are the opposite. They rarely are eager to engage in one-on-one -on -one showdowns. Plus, because fighting games pit you by yourself against a single opponent, you have to accept all the responsibility if you lose. You can't blame anyone else. In team-based shooters, when players win, they can say that they won because of their own contributions, but when they lose, it's because they got matched with a lousy team. Now again, that might sound like an older man, like, you know, ah, the newer generation, but uh, he's kind of using this to set up their approach to fighting game modes and accessibility and stuff like that, which in full context to me, isn't something, it just really gives context to what they might be approaching uh, for Tekken modes or Tekken updates down the line with Tekken 8 or beyond. He was essentially talking about how to take advantage of like this cultural shift and you know, essentially, how to have this type of thing appeal to newer generations of players. As someone who's been behind a franchise for so long, it makes sense that he'd be thinking that way. And he said, and I quote, I'm not saying we should suddenly turn a fighting game into a puzzle game or an RTS. I still think there's demand for games like this, but maybe we can include other ways of competing outside of the main game. For example, maybe they don't always have to fight one-on-one. -on -one. They could opt for team battles or three-on-three -three matches. We may want to incorporate this into the online mode's official rankings. Maybe team matches could have positions within a team something like the order of teammates in judo matches. He talked about how they could expand the metagame and stuff like that, and it makes sense. I mean, you've seen the offerings that the newest Street Fighter had and all that, so it makes sense for the head of Tekken to be thinking similarly. Also, uh, he might put Waffle House in the game. This was the funnier thing to me, is that people were rallying on social media uh, to have Waffle House, like a Waffle House parking lot, as a map for the game. And Harada said, what is this? Why are we doing this? And then he followed up with another tweet saying, okay, uh, this could work if they accept my proposal, but it's a brand, it's a property. They have intellectual property rights to Waffle House. You can't just easily get it in the game. Still, I would absolutely love that. As somebody who, when I go down south, I always hit a Waffle House as crazy as they can be. This would be so good. Because I mean, who hasn't fought in front of a Waffle House at 3 a.m.? I don't know. I mean, I haven't, but 
I've seen them. Next up, some stuff linked in the description down below. A pretty light week of trailers, but we do have a new trailer for Scum, the kind of DayZ survival game that's been out for a long time, but uh, this new trailer is out with the developers kind of teasing new updates and changes to the game. It's always kind of been a rough, weird game, but if you're interested, I figured I'd link that. Also, uh, an announcement trailer for Duckside. This is like a PvE, PvP, crafting, survival, persistent world, kind of rust type of thing, but you're playing as birds, like ducks, and that part seems really cool. I would love to play a game where you're a duck flying around. It looks a lot of fun. You're shooting dudes with guns, but then you're also just crafting and building and doing regular, typical survival game stuff. It's kind of a jarring mix, but still a bit of a creative spin. Also, there's this new game, uh, and this is like a gameplay overview trailer. I didn't know anything about this. It's called Jump Ship, uh, and it's like you and other players defending a ship, essentially going out there on little fighters, uh, also just hopping out on tethers and floating in space to repair the ship. Uh, it seems really ambitious, seems like it's from a small studio though, it does have a Steam page, but no release date yet, but I'm, I'm gonna keep my eye on this one. Also, believe it or not, a Hollow Knight Silk Song update. That's right, no, not a release date, but Oh God, this is like the smallest little thing, but the game now officially has a store page listing uh, on the Xbox Microsoft store, so there's that. I mean, it has had, I believe, a Nintendo Switch shop listing for a while, but now suddenly Xbox updated with it having a Silk Song page, which mean, is leading to people being like, oh, does this mean it's coming soon? You know, the ESRB, all that, I don't know for sure, but the fact that this actually dropped technically on April Fools, but it's a real thing, is kind of funny. So we came full circle with that, I guess. But for now, uh, that's really about it. I gotta get back to a beach with my name on it, so thank you guys for getting caught up on the news. Like I said, it's a light week, a simple week, but I do think things are gonna start ramping up towards mid to late April, but that's that's just my speculation. Still, uh, let's talk about this stuff. Also, if you wanna check out, I just put out a new video about God of War, the Rog Ragnarok DLC Valhalla. I, I meant to talk about this when it released, but I finally put out a video, so if you wanna hear my thoughts on that, I'll link, link that in the description down below with all the news. But again, let's talk about everything from the news this week. The Witcher 4, what are you expecting? With CD Projekt Red, are they saying enough? Do you not wanna hear from them anymore? Are you still excited? Where are you at? And what do you think about KOTOR? Are you in line with me where it just feels like it's in this weird limbo in terms of who's really supporting it? Uh, do you think that it's still just doomed? Like, it has it been doomed from the start? It's definitely a hard one to remake, I will say that. But let's talk about that. Let's talk about any of the news down in the comments. We'll be down there with you, of course. Uh, but if you wanna yell at me directly, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, at Jake Baldino, my name. But also, when you're in the comments, don't forget to mention in that pinned comment at the top, that thread, let us know what you're playing this weekend for our research. It helps us kind of know what types of videos and games to mention. It's stuff that you guys are actually into. But that's it. I've been talking enough. Thank you guys very much for listening. Clicking the like button does help us because we are here every way, week, every, even when I'm on vacation, dude. So yeah, let me know. Thank you guys for watching. Be safe. Have a great weekend. Pizza's on me.